Here's my card. It's got my cell number, my pager number, my home number, and my other pager number. I never take vacations, I never get sick, and I don't celebrate any major holidays. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be reacting to The Office again. I actually got some good feedback last time when I did this, and I think that this video is gonna even share with you more interesting learnings about how sales works. And you know what, as much as we make fun of the characters Dwight or Michael Scott or whoever else, there's actually some really interesting sales tidbits that you can take away that will make you actually better at closing deals yourself as well. So with that being said, my name is Lloyd Yip. I am the founder and CEO of Attract and Scale and we've helped over 130 plus companies around the world with building better sales processes and building high performing sales teams. And we've also helped countless amount of sales reps improve their own income. So with that being said, if you haven't already liked, commented and subscribed, hit that notification bell, please do, because every single week I'll be sharing more epic content about sales, marketing and growth. Let's get straight into it. We can offer our biggest discounts on 30% recycled and ultra premium laser. Okay. Okay. Can I use your phone? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Let me talk to you about a few of the other things we can offer. Namely, we know the tax season's coming up, so by April 1st, we can have you fully stocked. One. We have discount prices on ink cartridges. Three. And also, any forms that you're going to need, Seven. you can custom make them. <laughs> what is Dwight doing? Well, I appreciate what you guys are saying, but it uh, makes more fiscal sense to go with one of the big guys. Sure. That's true. We can't compete with their prices, but let me ask you something. How important to you is customer service? Very. Please keep holding. So yeah, that's actually smart to try to lean in on your strengths. Obviously, if you're running a smaller business, you're gonna have competitors that can just outprice you or they can outdo you in certain parameters. So it's important that you don't try to fight them where they are strong. You're never gonna beat Walmart on price. You're never gonna be able to beat McDonald's on scale and reaching different markets, but you can fight on your turf where you're strong at. So maybe you're using the highest quality ingredients if you're in the restaurant business, or let's say you're uh, running a marketing agency, maybe you win on just having the most uh, in-depth customer support and way more one-to-one -one, uh, response time compared to say your other bigger competitors. So whatever is your strong suit, try to find what you're good at and utilize that. Call is very important to us. Mm. It's one of the big guys. Been on hold this whole time. And this <laughs> is Dunder Mifflin. Dunder Mifflin Customer Service, it's Kelly. Hey Kelly, it's Jim. Oh my god, Jim, how are you? I to tell you. Here's my card. Yeah, so that's genius, right? Like, I mean, on one hand, you could just tell people, hey, the big guy, their customer service is pretty mediocre. Our customer service is much, much, much better. But the genius of this is hey, you know what, just call your competitor and you'll literally see how slow their response time is. Compared to if you call your own customer support line, it picks up immediately, show don't tell. So this is actually kind of genius and Dwight is usually a little bit of a doofus in the show, but a genius idea to just call um, the competitor and have the competitor show right in the office of the prospect, hey, I'm not very good. <laughs> You know, to, to use a live example in real time is pretty amazing. It's got my cell number, my pager number, my home number, and my other pager number. I never take vacations, I never get sick, and I don't celebrate any major holidays. <laughs> All right, I get it. We got a deal. <clears throat> oh, Dwight's so good. Dwight is so good in this one. All right, let's see, let's see another clip. Let's see another clip here. Hey, did you catch that up in Lake Wall and Pop Pack? <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, I used to go up there all the time with my stepdad, and I never caught anything that big. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're beginning strong once again. Michael Scott, he, once, he also comes off as a little bit of a doofus, just like Dwight at times. But if there's one thing that I'm going to say Michael is very good at that all salespeople can learn from is that he's amazing at building rapport. He's amazing at connecting to someone on a somewhat casual level. And it feels very human. He remembers that at the end of the day, even in sales, we're always selling human to human. People get lost in the whole B2B or B2C thing, selling to businesses. But hey, no matter who it is that you're selling to or what it is that you're selling, the person on the other end that's buying is still a human being. And Michael understands that. 
and he's able to create that relationship before he actually goes into trying to pitch the product, which I think is really amazing. And it makes it so much easier for you to actually sell the product effectively. Caught an 80 pound shark off Montauk. It's in the Hamptons. Uh -huh. My dad's got a 42 foot bay liner. And, and this is the exact uh, masterclass and what not to do. Um, I'm actually not sure what this character's name is. I think it might be Andy or something like that. But instead of building rapport, he's pretty much a showboating, humble bragging. You can even see in Michael's face, it's kind of hilarious. So he's going to have to steer this back because his colleague here is kind of ruining the experience. Um, but masterclass and how to create rapport and then masterclass and how to not create rapport. So <laughs> there you go. Sniped it with a rifle from the crow's nest. Also shot a deer once. You know what? Let's get right down to it. Yeah, and just to dive a little bit deeper why this other uh, guy, Michael's colleague, is not very good at building rapport. He makes it about himself. He makes it about, oh, here's what I did. Here's what makes me so cool. Whereas Michael is like, oh, wow, like your, your family, you guys must go fishing a lot. That's amazing. Michael has got this amazing ability to get the other person to talk about themselves. And Michael listens intently. He's genuinely curious and he actually is asking questions because he's truly uh, just curious about what the other person has to say and their own experiences. That's what allows him to be able to create that know, like, and trust factor. Clearly he's read how to win friends and influence people. Um, this other guy, I don't think he has. So he might want to, you know, take a lesson from Michael or read that book. Dunder Mifflin may be just two rooms in a warehouse, but what we lack in Flash, we will make up for with hard work and decency. Okay, this is the classic undersell because you should know we don't work out of a log cabin. We trade on the New York Stock Exchange. Ever heard of Once again, I mean, maybe this is because I know what the show is about. I know Dunder Mifflin is not on the New York Stock Exchange, but this guy is pretty much trying to oversell, overpromise. Never a good idea in sales to overpromise because when you underdeliver, it actually comes off as very, very bad. Not only are you gonna lose that customer, they're probably gonna start talking about you to their friends in a negative way. So you never wanna be what this guy is, which is constantly talking about himself, not really building rapport the right way, and overpromising. Heard of it? It's in New York. Um, I have to say I'm a little wary of getting involved with a big company. We've had some problems in the right. past. And I think what Andy is trying to express Andy is, is that while we have the resources of a large company, we will give you the care and attention of a small company. Man, that is like poetry. No. That's, that's good. Michael is, is actually doing a very good job in steering the conversation back whenever his colleague Andy ruins it and derails it. Now, how can you learn from this? Well, beyond just the fact that Michael's very good at building rapport and he's very good at making the customer feel as though he cares about learning about their life story, but he's also very good at, let's say the conversation goes in a bad direction, whether it be, uh, in this case, Andy causing it, or in more often than not, the case is the prospect derails the conversation. The prospect goes off into a tangent, they go somewhere random, they start talking about a bunch of stuff that is like irrelevant to the conversation. In sales, you're gonna deal with that and it's important that you always quarterback the conversation back to where you need it to go. Always pushing the conversation forward to the next step, whatever that is, right? Like sometimes the next step is you gotta qualify the prospect to understand if they're a good fit. Sometimes the next step is, okay, the prospect is qualified, but you gotta now sell them and uh, show them that your service is the correct service. And sometimes the next step is they're already bought in, but they just need to sign the dotted line and pay the money. So identify where the prospect is in the conversation and whenever the conversation derails or go off the tracks, you need to bring it back. And that's what Michael's very good at here. Um, and also, and this is similar to what Dwight and Jim were doing before in the other clip, Michael's very good at identifying, oh, you know what? I understand you're a little bit nervous about these bigger companies um, that maybe in the past have burned you. Well, here is actually why we are better in terms of customer support, because we really care. We're a smaller company, we're resourceful, we're gritty, but we really do um, give a lot of love and attention to every one of our individual prospects. Um, so Michael is able to do that and he's able to identify that objection and overcome it. Once again, don't be Andy in this situation, be Michael. I swear this no. guy can sell paper Stop to it. a tree. It's a big order. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, thank you. Hey, how's Annie? Oh, she's great. 
This is us last year in Bermuda. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of silly, um, but I still think that there is one thing that you can learn from it, which is pre doing the research and the preparation. So clearly this, uh, I actually don't know their names, but these two saleswomen, they somehow figured out that the prospect is married to a wife with a certain hairstyle. So they came in advance with the same makeup with the same hairstyle. That's kind of funny to me, but when it comes to like real sales, you should be doing your research in advance. You should be preparing. You should be looking at their LinkedIn profile or their website, understanding not just what the company's all about, but even what the individual prospect is about. Where do they go to school? What were their previous roles? What are their primary projects outside of work? If you can identify what those things are, it actually does make it easier for you to build that rapport. Um, you don't need to make your hair look like their wife's, but this is a very comedic way for me to actually identify something that really is real in sales, which is uh, advanced preparation. Lovely place. You ever been to Bermuda? Stanley Hudson. Oh, Julius, how's it going? Great, 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 great. Hey, Stanley, so good to see you too. <laughs> I'd like you fellas to meet Ryan Howard. Hi. I'm gonna let Ryan do a little pitch for you while I do my crossword puzzle, Ryan. <laughs> So to give you some context, um, I actually cut off a little bit of the clip earlier, which showed Ryan, who is this kind of skinny, awkward looking sales guy. He actually asked his colleague like, hey, let me take the sales call by myself because I want the practice. So that is the reason why his colleague just pretty much left to do some crossword. So definitely not advisable if you're doing like a partner sale experience with one of your colleagues to just like abandon your, your colleague. But let's just see how he does now that he's alone. Um, not well. <laughs> hi. 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 Hello, Ryan. Hi. What do you have for us? <laughs> oh. Okay, so this actually reminds me of a, a situation that I had earlier in my sales career. I was actually a manager of a door-to-door -door sales team, and I was just prospecting. And I was actually just shadowing one of my uh, direct reports. So we go up to the door, and my sales rep knocks on the door and the homeowner opens the door, right? And then for whatever reason, my sales rep, he just stares at the homeowner and doesn't say anything. He's just like, uh, like a deer in a headlight situation. It's like all the practice that we had ever done just disappeared from his mind. I, I get it. Sales is like pretty anxiety inducing and it was relatively early in his career. I think it might have been his first week or two on the job. So he just froze and he had no idea what to say. And then obviously uh, that went nowhere. The homeowner just kind of shut the door. But really the way that you get around this is just via preparation, right? Like you prepare so much that you're confident and then repetition, repetition, not just in the practice room, but also in the field. You know what? In sales, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have awkward moments. You're going to have conversations and sales calls that are just like really uncomfortable and cringy. But the more you do, the more you just feel confident and the less that those awkward moments make you feel like a sack of garbage because eventually you'll just kind of get over it and you'll even laugh about it. Right. But Mentally, I think it's important that you don't go into these sales calls, especially with executives, especially if you're talking to like a VP or a CEO level person to not think about them like a God and putting them on a pedestal because inherently when you put your prospect on a pedestal, it gives you additional anxiety. It freaks you out. And then it's much harder for you to just be yourself and have a normal conversation and treat them like a normal human being when you're on the call. In this situation, Ryan was probably unprepared he probably didn't practice enough. He probably just wasn't in the field having enough repetitions with real clients. And then certainly in his mind, he was probably putting so much pressure on himself that by the time he got to the field, he just froze. So these are definitely things to not do. And uh, yeah, but it, it's funny. This is like a very dramatized example of what really does happen in, in, in reality. So there we are, guys. Um, the Office is a hilarious show. And the funniest thing about it is that I constantly am just nodding my head thinking, wow, that's so true. That's something that I've definitely seen work in the world of sales. I've seen real sales reps actually pull that type of stuff off. 
both when it comes to the good things that you've seen here and the bad things that you've seen here. By the way, guys, if you're a sales rep or a sales manager and you're looking for some additional assistance when it comes to how you can improve your own skill set and perform your job better, make more income at whatever company you're working at, then just book a call with me below. I'm actually a professional sales trainer and consultant. I've worked with over 130 plus companies around the world. It's what I do and it's what I love. So book a call with me, love to give you assistance. And if you're just looking for additional resources, um, software is that I use to make my day more efficient and more effective when I do my job. I also have a bunch of links to really great softwares below that I use uh, when it comes to automations or outreach or data validation. So with that being said, check it out and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.